the White House um, did come up with um, a need to uh, define time on the moon because you know clocks are ticking differently on the moon than on earth did you know that well I know the day there is about two weeks oh here. no no not that's not the issue if you just take a clock and put it there on on the moon versus on earth it will tick slower no it will tick faster than faster earth. yeah because the gravitational potential of the moon is smaller than the earth it's easier to escape from the moon the escape speed mm -hmm. from the moon is smaller than the escape speed from earth meaning the gravitational potential well that you know we are we are experiencing on the surface of earth is deeper so it's more difficult to climb out of it that's why we need to launch by the way uh, the rockets that we launch are just sufficient to take for example starship out of the earth pool gravitational pool so so in the moon it's a piece of cake to escape gravity on earth it's much more difficult and it's just a coincidence that chemical rockets provide you with a rocket speed that is allowing uh, us to barely escape from the pool of earth because if we were sitting on a more massive planet uh, where the escape speed is is higher than mm. Earth, we would have a hard time launching spacecraft with chemical propellants. We won't right. be able to do that. Right. So if you imagine civilizations on, on planets that are more massive than the Earth, they don't have a space program probably uh, because chemical propulsion is uh, the most common thing you would use. Of course, you can imagine, you know, nuclear propulsion. We didn't develop it yet, but... Um, that the way first that thing, you know of. <laughs> yeah. But um, so the point is that um, um, the, the potential, the gravitational potential of Earth is deeper than on the moon. And, and the deeper the potential is, the slower a clock ticks. If you want to get younger, you just, you just put Go yourself down. close to a black hole where the time is ticking much more slowly, you know. Uh, you could imagine putting uh, beauty salons there where people will age more slowly than uh, farther away. Because according to Einstein's gravity, time is ticking more slowly, you know, close to a massive object. So uh, the Earth is more massive and, and you know, has a, a deeper potential well than the moon. And as a result, um, clocks are ticking more slowly on Earth. And so the, refresh me, if you're on the moon, the, t the clock clicks or the, the clock ticks slower. No, fast, faster, faster. So you age faster if you go to the view of the moon. Yeah, but for practical purposes like uh, technological applications, you need to synchronize clocks uh, between Earth and the moon, uh, if, especially if there will be a technological infrastructure there. Mm. And so that's why we have to think about these issues. Mm. Um, when we put infrastructure on the moon, we have to realize that time is ticking differently. And so you would lose the syn synchronous uh, you know, messaging between the Earth and, and, and the Moon after a while if you don't correct for that. So you have to define some um, time in the Moon that uh, will match the time on the Earth. And the same is true about Mars, by the way. Uh, uh, how, how, how does time move on Mars relative to the Earth? So it, it's in between uh, the Earth and the Moon. Oh. And uh, if you go out to interstellar space, there the potential is even shallower. Uh, so... You know, we age more slowly close to the Earth than if you were an interstellar astronaut. And right. if you wanted to age the least amount, you would locate yourself close to a black hole where the potential is very deep. Well, there's the the idea of of traveling at light speed too, right? Where there's yeah. the time dilation. So if you're if you're so if here you're, is an interesting tidbit. If you, um, according to Einstein's theory of of gravity, if you were to sit on a rocket that accelerates at 1G. That's the acceleration we feel on the surface of Earth, 1G. If you were to sit on a, uh, in a rocket that accelerates, it would feel just like being here, sitting on these chairs, because you can't tell the difference between an accelerating rocket and, and gravity. There is no difference. So to you, it would feel, you know, if the rocket is accelerating at 1G, it would feel as if you're on the surface of Earth. You would feel very comfortable. Mm -hmm. And if you do that for one year, you would get close to the speed of light. Just one year. Hmm. If you do that for 25 years, you'll get extremely close to the speed of light. That would mean that time is uh, ticking much more slowly in your frame relative to the rest of the universe. And within 25 years, you can actually cross the entire universe. 25 years at light speed. 
very, you know, I'm saying continue to accelerate at 1G. Oh, right? I see what you're saying. You yeah. keep accelerating at 1G all the time. You're getting so close to the speed of light that in 25 years, in your frame of reference, in that rocket, only 25 years elapsed while billions of years elapsed in the rest of the universe. Right. So when you come back to Earth, the Earth will not be there. There wouldn't be any oceans. All your friends are dead long ago. <laughs> nothing. That's why it doesn't make sense to have an Instagram account because in a billion years, nobody would operate that. Mm. Um, this is like the paradox of sending people into interstellar, like uh, like interstellar explorers on rockets to go outside of the solar system because like just a, a couple of years into their trip, they would have te technology on earth would advance so fast because time would be passing. Like 500 years could pass on earth and we would figure out anti-gravity saucers. Oh, yeah. And, so, and uh, a exactly. group of astronauts could literally pass you up exactly. with breakfast still in their stomachs exactly. from that morning. And you'd be exactly. like, what the hell? I, d I so dedicated my life to this, this. This is exactly right. So if you look at the planet that uh, was occupied by a technological civilization, you look at it from a distance, what you would see is very fast moving rockets or spacecraft that were launched last. They were the last ones to come out of this technological civilization. Whereas the more primitive ones like Voyager that we launched in the 70s will be lagging behind. Mm -hmm. So you'll see all these rockets coming out of that planet. The most advanced are the ones that were launched most recently and they're moving much faster. The ones that you see first will be the ones that yeah. are the most recent. And by the way, even Voyager, that's the amazing thing. I did a calculation with, I asked my student to calculate the trajectory of Voyager in a billion years. Where will it be in a billion years? Turns out it will be all the way on the other side of the Milky Way galaxy. So it can easily traverse those distances, no problem. Even with technologies of the 60s, you know, chemical propulsion. So that means since most stars formed billions of years before the sun, there was plenty of time even for chemical rockets to make it to our backyard from the other side of the Milky Way disk. So my point is, often it's said, oh, you need to go through a wormhole or you need to move faster than light. That's not true. It le it's less than a billion years with the technologies of the 70s. And that means that given the time, the age difference between the sun and most stars in the Milky Way, there was plenty of time for them to reach us.